Mushrooms carry the untapped potential to help mitigate forest fires. In today's crazy world where these fires are happening more often, mushrooms can help compost excess debris and retain water in ecosystems. And even some mushrooms only appear after a forest fire. What's up, Mushroom Fam? It's Gary with Fresh From The Farm Fungi. Today, I wanted to talk about mushrooms and fire mitigation. Mushrooms can help mitigate fires in a lot of different ways. Another way that we can connect to nature is by harness the intelligence of nature for your brain health with Fantastic Fungi's Memory Gummies, featuring lion's mane, ashwagandha, and choline. These fungal allies support concentration, ideation, sharpen recall and retention, are vegan and packaged in 100% compostable material. My personal experience with Lion's Mane has been enhanced REM sleep cycles and better dream recall, which improves my mental clarity because I get better sleep. This helps dramatically with running a farm and keeping up with my toddler. Click the link in the description below to get yours now. Starting backwards this summer with all of the outbreaks of the forest fires here in Colorado and more recently the fires that are happening in California, forest fires started to become more of a topic that's on my radar. I believe that mushrooms carry untapped potential to help mitigate forest fires by efficiently helping to remove excess debris. So a lot of times in Colorado, at least, forest fires are caused by excess scrub or slash. After a unusually rainy season, there will be a explosion of growth in in the forests. And if that's followed by a drought, all the excess growth will get dried out and become very brittle. And that is uh, the potential for the start of a forest fire. So mushrooms can come into play because they feed on the cellulose and the lignans of woody products. In nature, without any intervention, usually a forest fire will help clear the area to refresh that ecosystem. But in today's world, when there's houses that are sprinkled in, in these rural areas, there's not enough natural fires taking place. As a mushroom farmer, I felt the need to take action this past summer. Instead of just sitting there and watching the news and waiting for all this stuff to erupt, I decided to go out to my property and kind of examine some of the uh, excess foliage that looked very dry and brittle. And everyone could kind of do their part and use mushrooms to help mitigate excess foliage. So one of the uh, key aspects of mushroom farming is producing a lot of substrates, spent substrates, especially um, oyster mushrooms. And being in lieu of these recent fires that are happening all over Colorado, um, shout out to the first responders. We had a pretty crazy scare here recently with uh, a sparked up from a lightning that happened. Thankfully, it rained for a really long time that night and it kind of was easy to put out. But you can see behind me, I've got some scrub and uh, you can hear some of the choppers in the back. Um, probably just spot checking for fires, but anyway, We've got some scrub oak behind us back there and a bunch of dense, kind of a damaged or, you know, older uh, debris, which I'm gonna be cleaning up with all of these different tools here. So I'm gonna flip this around, go through some of the tools. And then the most important aspect is to compost all of this debris because that is uh, one of the best ways to sequester all those nutrients into the soil. And I think that with mushrooms, 
Um, you won't be burning it, which will be posing more of a risk for fire. And it's a really good way to feed the soil for some of our future plans here. Um, I really wanna put in some fruit trees. So kind of getting rid of the old diseased scrub oak and then mulching it down will kind of create a good base where we can plant some fruit trees in the near future. Got some chainsaws here. This is called the Farm Boss or Steel MS-271. This is one of the main ones that I use to cut through some of the uh, ponderosa pine. And then we've got the Steel 180C right there. This is a, a really good mid-sized saw. It's gonna help, you know, clear out some of this old dead scrub here. It's really good for getting into thicker stuff. I've also got this really long pole saw. Um, it's an extendable pole saw to help get some of the higher up limbs, especially near these uh, power lines here. Um, and then also I've got this uh, steel cutter for some of the thicker brush if we come across it. Um, it's got a brush blade and then also just for clearing out some grass, even though I'm gonna keep that around, um, we might wanna mitigate some grass if it's not you know, flourishing. Okay, and then also I've got some handheld blades that are really good for kind of fine trimming some of the scrub if you wanna kind of uh, landscape it. So I'll go through these. All right, so I wanna do a shout out to Tommy Vic. Um, they're sponsoring this video, so I'll post a link to this product here, but it's an electrical handsaw that'll be really nice for doing scenarios like this, just cleaning up some scrub, or um, if you, you know, have some thicker rose bushes that you have to have pruning. It's a really nice tool that I'm excited to try. So you can see it's got some rechargeable batteries here. These are fully charged and ready to go. It's a nice six inch blade and it's a really convenient um, tool and it's gonna help us with some of this uh, fire mitigation here. All right, so there's some progress with that first patch. You can see a lot of that dead stuff is gone. And then we've got a nice pile of some mulchable sticks right here. So uh, we're gonna just continue down the driveway and clean up a bunch of that dead stuff. And then over to the left here, it gets a little thick and that's where I'm gonna do some thinning with a little of the heavier duty stuff. So there's a sapling here and these scrub that could potentially grow into those power lines. So I'm gonna try to clear these two out here. So I'm gonna continue down the driveway here. And then 
I'll be uh, swooping back up to collect all debris and then dump it into a pile next to the chipper. And then that's a continuous process. So we've got some of it chipped already and then we'll work on doing this whenever the uh, weather's right, right after some rain. That way there's less dust. If you see behind me, some of this dead branches that have been blown, that's what I'm talking about. I really enjoy using the pole saw to clear some of that out. There's a technique called cold burning where the fire companies or the mun municipalities will come in and they'll cut down a bunch of debris to make a perimeter or just to clear excess liabilities that could be present in your area. And typically they'll take all of these sticks and trimmings and put them in a pile and then use a bulldozer to bury them under the ground. And this is good because it helps protect them from exposure to lightning or other embers or reasons why forest fires could occur. In addition to burying them, I believe that we can utilize mushroom mycelium to help break down that woody debris faster, as well as helping to retain water in the soil. So the mycelium will help break down that wood and it will also break those macronutrients into micronutrients, which is better for the soil. And then in turn, that will help give life to that ecosystem. So it will have resistance to future fires. Now, the more surface area that grows in that region, like if grasses start to emerge, if bushes start to grow, the surface area of those plants will help retain moisture in that soil and the more moisture that is retained the harder it is for that area to burn so it's kind of like a complex cycle but i believe that the missing link and a lot of these practices that are done regularly is simply by adding mushroom mycelium so as a mushroom farmer i would highly encourage people to reach out to their local municipalities Maybe you can donate spent blocks or make spawn with intention um, to help mitigate these slash piles or the debris piles. And even if there's larger debris like logs um, or hardwood trees that have uh, fell, you can utilize other methods to grow mushrooms and speed up that process. One other point that I'd like to bring up is a company that's called Chip Drop. So this is almost the synergy or the balance between the community providing for the mushroom farmer or the mushroom farmer providing back to the community. So Chip Drop is a company where you can place an order for a delivery of fresh wood chips. Now, as a mushroom farmer, that's amazing resource. I can grow Kingstropharia or oyster mushrooms and utilize this substrate, which is essentially free to grow more mushrooms and provide a produce to the community. Definitely check out Chip Drop in your area. It's very simple. Everything's online and you just have to have a designated area for them to drop off those wood chips. So taking it a step further, you can kind of take stewardship of your own property and go around and get rid of debris 
and put it through a chipper and create really rich soil. And in return, you'll get an abundance of plant life and uh, you'll help to revitalize the ecosystem. All right, guys. So I hope that bringing up this conversation has brought to light some of the issues with today's forest fire problems. I think that there's a potential for mushrooms to be added into this uh, into this system in mitigating future fires and retaining water in our ecosystem. If you'd like to get connected to nature more, check out Fantastic Fungi's Gummies. The link is in the description below. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed that video. Comment if you have any more suggestions about how mushrooms could be utilized to help forest fires, or if you're a firefighter and any of this stuff is making sense, I would like to hear some feedback from the community. Okay, guys, until next time, much love.